6, 2018 meeting of the Missoula Consolidated Planning Board to order. And we'll begin with a roll call vote. Helen Jenkins? Here. Helen Jenkins is here. Andy Benford? Here. Andy Benford is here. Neva Hassanen? Here. Neva Hassanen is here. Michael Houlihan? Here. Michael Houlihan is here. Dudley and Prada? Dudley and Prada is absent. Jason Rice? Jason Rice is absent. Jamie Hoffman? Here. Jamie Hoffman is here. Stephanie Potts? Here. Stephanie Potts is here. Vince Cristo? Here. Vince Cristo is here. Peter Benson? Peter Benson is absent. John Newman? Here. John Newman is here. And with a member of the city absent, would you like to appoint Vince Cristo as a voting member this evening? Yes, I would. Thank you. We do have a quorum. All right. I'll move on to approval of the minutes from the January 16th, 2018 meeting. Everybody had a chance to take a look at those. I didn't see any changes myself. But. Okay, entertain a motion. I'd make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of uh, January 16th, 2018. Motion from Andy. Second. Seconded by Michael. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to public comment on items not on tonight's agenda. Any public comment? Okay, seeing none, move on to staff comments. Jamie, any staff comments? Nope. Okay, perfect. On to the main event, public hearings. Tonight we have uh, still waters on Clark Fork number three, condition amendment. That's a county item presented by Jamie Erbacher. Take it away. Thank you, John. <clears throat> So this is a request from Mike Wheelahan with DJNA um, on behalf of Freestone LLC to amend the condition of approval related to the weed management plan for Stillwaters on the Clark Fort number three. Um, seven, er, Stillwaters number three is a 71 lot residential subdivision approved on July 15th of 2005. It's located just southwest of the intersection of Kona Ranch Road and Mullen Road, highlighted there in red. Um, so Stillwaters on the Clark Fork number three was part of two other subdivisions, which included Stillwaters on the Clark Fork number one, which is shown oops, right over here in the white. Um, <clears throat> and then Stillwaters on the Clark Fork number two, which included four phases shown here. Um, so Stillwaters number one is a five lot subdivision approved on August 13th of 2003 and filed on January 12th of 2004. Stillwaters number two was a 20 lot subdivision split into the four phases and approved on November 5th of 2003 with the last phase filed on June 13th of 2017. Um, <clears throat> so the most recent phasing plan for Stillwaters on the Clark Fork number three, which is the, the mass of lots shown here, um, was approved by the Board of County Commissioners on February 3rd of 2014. As part of the phasing plan approval, a weed management plan was to be recorded on May 15th of 2014, and initiation of the plan and implementation and progress on that implementation was to be verified by, Ju by July 15th of 2014. Um, unfortunately, the plan was not implemented, and now the developer is requesting to extend the original dates of the plan to spring and summer of 2018. So again, just to be clear, this request only involves the extension and implementation of the weed management plan um, as part of a condition amendment. There is no um, phases of the subdivision proposed for extension. And this is, this is new. Um, all major subdivisions uh, with condition amendments or phasing plan adjustments are now going to be coming to the planning board, at least the county um, subdivisions. So you may be seeing more of these requests coming forward to you. And this was um, a change to the November 2016 subdivision regulations, just to better our public process and make the public more involved. So as part of the, um, the condition amendment, we must find that the request complies with the following nine criteria that are listed on the screen. Uh, the request has to be minor in nature. <laughs> it must um, still comply with the subdivision regulations and the amendment may not reduce the protection or safeguards provided by the requirement. Uh, the amendment cannot create any new impacts to the area and must remain compliant with the growth policy and the findings of fact of the subdivision. It cannot be a series of uh, incremental requests nor can it change the area proposed for the subdivision or be economically driven. 
So staff went through and reviewed the nine criteria <coughs> and found that the request was minor in nature. Um, it was consistent with the original approval and findings of the condition when required. Uh, it met the intent and um, it's not seen as a violation of the regulations, um, nor will the request be viewed as economically driven or a proposal that would result in a series of requested amendments. Uh, there's no new impacts that will be generated with this request and in fact will hopefully assist neighboring properties with their own weed management. Uh, as required by the November 2016 subdivision regulations, we published a legal ad in the Missoulian on January 21st of 2018. We notified adjacent property owners and the Stillwaters Homeowners Association uh, by certified mail. We also notified a, a large handful of county agencies. Um, the weed district had reviewed or has reviewed the weed management plan and they had a few minor changes for DJNA to make. Um, so Mike is aware of those changes. Uh, the only response we received from adjoining property owners was from Adam Hertz and he was not for or against the request. Rather, he wanted to make sure that staff considered House Bill 445 and the application of it. Um, I did go back and review House Bill 445, which amended uh, Montana Code annotated sections 76.3, 102, 103, and 76.8, with regards to newly approved phase subdivisions and extensions for such. Uh, since this is not a request for a new subdivision, um, it does not apply nor does it affect the request in any manner. So based on these facts, uh, staff is recommending approval to modify the condition as proposed on the screen. As you can see, it includes date amendments to reflect the 2018 calendar year and additional language that states no additional phasing plan extensions will be approved if the plan is not implemented as required. Um, so that's all I have, and I believe Mike is here to speak on behalf of the applicant. Thanks, Jamie. <clears throat> Would the applicant wish to speak about this item? If so, come on up and state your name for the record. And Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, any public comment on this particular item? Okay. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and open this up to comments from the board if there are any. Um, I just have one question about the change of language in the proposed condition. It looks like at the end of the very so at the end of the original paragraph, it says and progress on implementation shall be approved by the Missoula County Extension, Missoula County Weed District in the Planning Office by July 15th, um, 2014. And it, in all the other adjustments for date, they've kept all the conditions, but it seems like that's been deleted out of this now, so I just am yeah. wondering about that. And we did that, um, we made that change to reflect the regulations that are in place more so today, um, because it's just so many check-ins and so many um, reviews by the planning office and by the weed district and the weed district doesn't want to do that many check-ins and so they um, were fine with this amendment and then just noting that uh, the county commissioners aren't going to approve any additional phasing plan extensions if they don't implement it so okay thanks for that clarification yep. any other comments Andy I guess I had one more for Jamie and this is a general question so if a developer comes in and makes a of this amendment, is it like one time and you can never do anything? Is that what I, how I read that last sentence? Well, it, that says if they don't execute, right. no extensions would be allowed. So if they execute it and su are successful, they could come back for others. Correct. But if you come, ask for an extension and don't comply, then you could not ask for any others. Right, so if they don't- On anything. Yeah, if they don't file the weed management plan and they don't um, implement it, then the commissioners aren't going to give them any more extensions. That's that's the thought behind it. But you could have multiple extensions on a project, and if you met those requests, you could get more than one. I'm not following. Sorry. If there were other amendments, whatever they might be, scheduling change of a filing of a phase or anything, and they were reviewed under this process, there's not a limit. To, you can only do one. Um, as far as like a phasing plan extension. Yeah. There are limits, and it depends on the number of lots in a subdivision, okay. and there's a three-year window 
incremental window. And that's more of a general question, not specific to this, I right. don't think. But, yeah. Okay, thanks. Neva. Thanks. I may have missed this, so, but uh, who's managing for the weeds right now? I, I, like, so this is, you're asking to be, have the plan be submitted so it would be later the later date. What's happening right now? How is it being managed? I may leave that to Mike to answer. <laughs> like we're all talking about what what's going to happen in a for a plan in the future. Yep. You want me to come up here and again, sir, if you just introduce yourself. So this, this is Mike Wheelahan with DJNA, and uh, right now not, nothing is being done. Uh, the land is still uh, is a cultivated crop area, um, and it's been like that since, what, 2013 or more? So no, nothing has been done. It's still the way that it was before it was even in the process of going through subdivision review. Thanks. That helps. <coughs> Any additional questions? Okay. Does anybody care to make a motion here? I think towards the end of the reports, probably. I don't. I don't think we need to read the condition into the into the record or anything like that. But if probably just reference the staff report would work fine. Sure. Why not? <laughs> Let me do it, please. Um, uh, I'd like to make a motion that uh, the request for a condition amendment be approved based on the findings and conclusions presented by the staff and the, uh, the condition that shall be amended is in the staff report and I'd like to move uh, approval of that statement condition all right motion from neva do we have a second seconded by helen any comment on the motion additional comment okay seeing none we'll uh, take a vote all those in favor say aye. aye aye opposed okay seeing none the condition amendment passes thanks jamie appreciate it thank thanks you. for the info yeah thank you the context is always important Okay, move on to communications and special presentations. I don't know that we have any of those. Committee reports, anything from since January 16th? Well, I haven't had anything, so. Uh, old business, we'll start with uh, the first item there and then we'll <laughs> add an item uh, with regard to the resolution that we discussed back in December. So um, the first item is election of a vice chair. That's continued from the previous meeting in Helen's absence. Um, so. Um, I, I, I think it's probably kind of pro forma here, but I guess we'll just sort of take a vote. Helen, thanks again for your willingness to serve. Um, and I guess I, I would move that, uh, that uh, Helen Jenkins be appointed vice president for a second year of the Missoula Consolidated Planning Board. Is there a second to that motion? I second it. Seconded by Jamie. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Seeing none. Helen? You're on board again, thanks. Uh, okay, and then the second item, I will just kind of pass them out here. Stephanie, I think probably a little context is in order for you. Oh, thanks. Okay, so, and, and please somebody interrupt me if I'm butchering the impetus of this particular document but um, and to an extent the resolution kind of speaks for that impetus itself but uh, we had seen uh, sort of a serial filings of uh, rezoning applications in the city in particular over by the good food store and with each one of these rezoning applications somebody was in essence asking to uh, comply with the growth policy because the existing zoning didn't really comply with the growth policy and this isn't the only part of town where that's the case. Honestly, I think there are probably a fair number of places in Missoula County where maybe even more 
where the zoning and the growth policy just don't match up. And, um, you know, while I think, I think, well, we all would probably agree that, that just that, you know, citywide uh, effort to rezone to bring the two in, into sort of compliance is a huge task, same with the county. Um, there are very likely areas in the city um, and specifically the area right by the good food store, the one that sort of started all this, where if the city were to maybe take a concerted uh, look, a, a close look at that area and maybe some other hot areas that are sort of in, like quickly developing, that they might find uh, that changing the zoning might sort of effectuate the growth policy and might, you know, sort of help that growth out. Um, so, it, and this was a very long time ago. It, the, I did not uh, fulfill my duty, which was to um, send either an email or a document or something like that to John Dabari talking about this. I eventually did it. This is what I did, um, and what what our discussion is. That I think we'll you know hopefully pass this. Send it on to John. Um, I know. I'm not sure who amongst us talked about it. Maybe at the um, at the meetings with the land use and planning uh, committee. At, at the time that you know their term was re-upped, but I got an email from Denise Alexander with City Development Services that said, hey, everybody seems to be talking about this letter that you're sending. <laughs> Did we get the letter? I'm like, no, 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 it's coming, it's coming, wait for it, you know. Um, but point being, um, I think, you know, John is expecting this and, you know, knowing John, he's probably talked about this with other people, so maybe more than, you know, maybe the whole committee is waiting for it. Denise is waiting for it to just sort of see what our thought was on this. I kind of gave her a hint that this is what we were thinking. And um, so anyway, uh, if we if we pass this and sign it, um, then I will forward it on to John and hopefully that sort of spurs some action. And the action sort of on the second page of the resolution that we're hoping for is that, uh, you know, for, first of all, that city staff gets the directive from LUP to sort of start thinking about the notion of what I've kind of called like either neighborhood wide or area wide or sub neighborhood scale rezoning. Um, and then uh, that once they're given that direction, the staff starts to look at areas of the city where, hey, there is a really major sort of um, a discrepancy between the growth policy and zoning that's to an extent that it's sort of obstructing, you know, or, or, or holding things back. Uh, maybe the city staff starts to look at those different areas and, and you know, start to initiate some, some uh, city council initiated rezoning projects, larger scale instead of parcel by parcel piecemeal. So yeah, that's kind of the deal. And then uh, in December when we talked about the first draft of this resolution, we kind of agreed that, well, you know, of course city staff, the city's always constrained by um, uh, work plans and that sort of thing, and they can only do so much each year. There's obviously a lot of different projects that city staff are always working on. So we sort of agreed that um, when this initial conversation happens where areas that should be looked at in more depth are sort of listed out, um, that maybe we would take the ones that are further down the list and might not be find themselves on a city work plan for a while and start to take a look ourselves and maybe come up with some recommendations and get that process going so that by the time city staff can get to those items, some legwork's already been done. Did I leave anything out? Jamie. It costs a lot to resolve. It does. If it's smaller than an acre, it's either four or $5,000. And you've got to you know, retain professionals to assist you in the application. Maybe you even got to present or develop some kind of zoning constant compliant with, with the zoning you require, it's really burdensome. And the smaller the parcel, the more expensive it is. Um, so I'm really happy to see this because I've been involved in a lot of situations in which I, I'd wish the city had taken the initiative to fix what is a problem. Um, S, special District 2 in the city along Reserve Street and, and 3rd Street is, a, you know, was a piece of junk. Uh, the, the parcel, the tire rabbit shop across the street from St. Pat's has a site-specific zoning that I've looked at for the sake of the client who requested me to do it. It's awful. Uh, and it doesn't comply with the, the downtown uh, master plan. I mean, I can think of a lot of areas in the city where it's a problem. And this is a very good idea, a very progressive and needed thing 
that, that, the, that the city, City Hall could solve rather than that to have individual property owners come forward with, with you know, sequential requests. Mm -hmm. um, and this, this, is, this is directed at the city and not the county. That's right. And that's purposeful. Right. And, and why is that? Well, I think um, uh, maybe somebody can answer this better than I can, but I, I, I think in part it's because we saw a bunch of city projects right in a row. Um, but I think, I mean, if I could guess, it probably has to do with um, us sort of sensing that maybe the discrepancy between zoning and the growth policy designations was actually having a negative effect or more of a negative effect in the city. I don't know if... Well, I would also add that, I, you know, there's, there's a lot of kind of opportunity here and the pipeline is very deep um, for projects that are going to kind of conflict. The other thing is John Farr is an advocate for this kind of work. And so it's timely that we're submitting this request to the city um, so that John can help move that along. Yeah, but there's also I don't, kind of a general appetite, I think, from the planning office in the city to, to pursue these kinds of this has nothing to do with our conversation, but I was told not long ago that at times we don't have our microphones on yeah. and, and that I should remind everybody at the beginning of the meeting. So I need to, I just kind of wondered if maybe that was the case here. So anyway, go ahead. Um, you know, the, in the county, the first place I think about is East Missoula. Um, and is there a comprehensive plan for East Missoula? A, f a fair amount of which is unzoned? Yeah. So um, staff in our office for the county right now in CAPS is working on updating the land use map. Um, one area of concentration is going to be that East Missoula area. Um, so I believe once we get the land use mapping updated, we're also then right behind that working on the zoning update. And then um, um, we could look then more specifically like the city is doing to make sure that the zoning is actually matching that growth policy. We've heard the same thing from the uh, East Missoula residents that growth policy doesn't match, zoning isn't doing anything, or it's just unzoned, so. Helen? So this is a great good thing. Yeah. Jamie, I know you've shared this information with us before, but what's the timeline again with the county's um, land use map? Oh boy, um, Heather, have you heard the latest I, I can tell you that um, I mean originally I think it was slated to take about 15 months total and that probably started I mean I can't remember when our first meeting was but it was probably back Six in August ago. maybe yeah so I mean we're probably looking at maybe like you know the end of 2018 perhaps yeah, that sounds about right and you know we're right I think right, right now we're in this sort of conceptual stage but where the rubber meets the road is when Mm -hmm. You go out and present this map to people, and I mean, rubber meets the road is probably a really nice way of putting <laughs> what could potentially happen at some of the meetings um, where this map gets presented to people. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Neva. Thanks. Thank you. Um, actually, I just want a clarification on what you said, Jamie. I thought that there, your, you and. Um, Jenny Dixon are working on you know the zoning in multiple phases and but you're saying now you will wait until the land use map is completed before we do whatever the second phase of the zoning project is or did I miss something well so Jenny and I are working right now on the zoning updates so we are making a draft but first we want to be able to roll out to the community what the land use mapping will be have that adopted and then that way people will know what um, regulations either to expect for that zoning district that they will be in um, if if they were to rezone or zone the property so say for example right now it's unzoned and then um, there's a proposal to either zone or rezone East Missoula um, then they know what to expect for that zoning designation because it obviously would change from what is currently in um, the regulations. Mm -hmm. Can I speak to the resolution? For sure. For um, thank you very much for drafting this and yeah, it's no really clear and well, well done. Thank you so much. Um, I, I ask these questions because I want, I, 
I have this sense that we really kind of missing we're missing the bigger picture right around Missoula, um, especially, and that you know this isn't necessarily focused on the city because the city finished its growth policy process and completed the map two years ago when they were supposed to, like, as was the county. Um, and so now we're waiting another year maybe for um, the land use map from the county. And so this motion that you're making uh, or suggesting makes a lot of sense focusing on the city because the city is actually the one that is in the position of um, needing to consider rezoning because we've done the work on the visioning of the growth policy uh, and such. And my, I, while I, I'm going to totally support this, um, but I worry that we're really sort of, we get focused on the, the trees and miss the forest um, and that the city and the county, you know, what, let's say, let me say the last thing I want to say is that are the city's attempt to focus inward and the growth policy that many of us were part of um, makes a lot of sense to me. What I worry about is if anything kind of goes, uh, that's an overstatement, sure. around it. But right, you know, if we're not, if we don't have our ducks in a row in the larger donut around the city, then <coughs> that city objective may not be met. Um, so I'm certainly supporting this and hope we'll move forward with it, but I also am wanting to express my concern that we're not looking at that bigger picture. And I believe there are some technical groups or um, advisory um, boards that um, include individuals from the city development services and so they are considering how the city and the county work together in that donut area, if you will, um, when we're working on the land use mapping. And then for the zoning, same thing there. Uh, we're definitely working on our draft right now. We are looking to the city regulations because we are concentrating on those, that more of the urban area of the county, you know. We're not looking up at the Sealy Lake area or anything like that right now. Um, so we are definitely thinking of the city. We are trying to be um, going as quickly as we can, but <laughs> we've got, uh, yeah. you know, like John said, <laughs> limited amounts of time as far as our Absolutely. workload. Yeah. So, I yeah. Yes. So, as I was mentioning to Michael before the meeting started. Um, I'm very supportive of this, and thank you so much for putting it together, but it does give our uh, planning board some homework. Um, and mm -hmm. so maybe after we um, approve it, if it, if it is approved, um, I don't know if we want to, I, I guess we should determine a process for identifying these other projects that we want to take on and, and what we want to do with that. So just thinking ahead. Yeah, I wonder, <clears throat> I mean, um, yeah, do we, I mean, obviously the, the um, LUP committee and the city council are under absolutely no obligation to do this. Um, so, you know, we make the recommendation if they don't take it, then my, my conception of this was like, you know, this goes forward. There is some sort of staff centric effort to, lo you know, designate some of these areas and look into some of these areas and that whatever's sort of left over we would pick up. But that presumes that they'll do something. And if they don't, then yeah, we probably need a contingency plan for doing this on our own. Well, or identifying the projects, you know, so maybe even if they do start some projects, you know, we need a process for communicating, for staff communicating with us on what's appropriate for us to take on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Because I think we should have a concurrent effort here. We shouldn't just wait for the city to figure it out. Yeah. I think there's some opportunity for us to prepare it. I wonder if the appropriate thing to do is to go talk about it with the committee. Yeah, go get, you know, maybe see if Denise can be at a meeting sometime in Laval maybe and just sort of talk about what we're thinking about and 
And you know, if, if I, I can, when I send that on, I will suggest to uh, John and Denise that that session occur. And you know, I would say the more the merrier that want to come attend that just so every, you know, there's, there's multiple understandings of what occurs at that meeting and not just filtered through me because uh, I don't trust myself. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I don't know, any, any other comments on this? Yeah, and this is another thing I was thinking about today. Um, I, t I feel like I have memories of uh, Mayor Angen reading resolutions into the record. And I don't know that I'm in favor of that necessarily, but um, maybe we could just maybe the motion instead of reading the entire resolution into the record, we can you know have a, re a motion that's consistent with the first bolded paragraph. Maybe um, does anybody have a, an opinion on that? Well, could you make a motion to just go to resolution 2018-1? Yeah, I mean, it might, you know, just for the sake of clarity of the record, it might be helpful to just give a little bit of, just so 2018-1, not like we do a lot of resolutions, but, you know. I don't know the protocol, whether you have to read it into the record. I don't really know either. Um, you the, any fo I mean, have you witnessed the commissioners reading a resolution into the record or anything like that? I don't know, I think it since the answer isn't like resoundingly yes, we should avoid that 20 minute long <laughs> process. Maybe I should, hear ye, hear ye. Um, dilly dilly. Yeah. <laughs> oh yay, oh yay. Um, okay, well then, okay. John, I have, I have one question actually, yeah, as we were since. talking about um, engagement with city staff. Um, it was Mike Haynes and, uh, and the mayor going to be made aware of this as well? I assume that, I mean, we certainly could copy uh, the mayor. I mean, my intent was to send it to Denise and send it to Mike and send it to John Dabari. Right. And it, I, I mean, I could definitely copy him on the email. Yeah, the only reason, it, you, know, um, you know, item two, one of these um, under now, therefore be it resolved, the mm -hmm. city council direct staff to determine. I mean, my understanding of the way it works, my understanding of the way it works is that the city council doesn't really direct staff at all, do they? I mean, yeah. that's yeah, they do. They, they do. do direct staff. Yeah. Oh. They control okay. Okay. It's like it's not uncommon to see, um, you know, a constituent approach a city council person and say, "Hey, I think you should be working on this," or maybe you know, a critical mass is reached and a council person will bring a agenda item at LUP and say, "Go forth, staff, figure this one out." So. I think that's, I think that's appropriate, Great. at least in my experience. Yeah. Great. So, any other comments or questions? Yeah. I, you know, thinking ahead, if this does uh, move forward, I can think of a moment where there, there could be a massive rezoning. And you think about things like notice and how they're going to handle that. It could be a pretty complicated thing, but I, that yeah. should not... Uh, stop us from trying to see that this through I I think that uh, having you know title 20 having recently been enacted this is not going <laughs> to seem like quite the massive task that maybe it would have before well that. before it certainly would have yeah. yeah I mean I can't remember the notice that happened with title 20 I mean wasn't it it, it was yeah. citywide mm -hmm. right so anyway yeah I guess if you know if if they can't do it, then we'll hear that they can't do it, but we might as well ask them to first, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, well, I'll make a motion unless there are other questions. Okay. So I move to approve resolution number 2018-1, a resolution of the Missoula Consolidated Planning Board recommending that the Missoula City Council initiate rezoning certain areas of the city to comply with the growth policy and all other um, suggestions included in the resolution document. Okay, we have a motion from Helen. Do we have a second? I so second. Seconded by Jamie. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, seeing none, the resolution passes. And um, yeah, I guess maybe if we just sign it. And I don't know if it gets put in the record. You know, typically the city clerk would put it in the record, but I don't, I don't really have much. Maybe we could append it to the minutes or something like that. 
I don't know. We're in uncharted waters here. <laughs> yeah, doing stuff. Um, so I guess two questions um, or comments. One is I think Vince is right. We should show this to the mayor. Mm -hmm. We should know that we're being proactive. Um, and secondly, I uh, apologize for missing the last meeting, and so it may have come up then, but do we have a representative from this board to LUP? I don't know that we do. I don't know if that was one of the, um, I, I, I don't know that's, that's one of like the official boards or commissions or, or groups that we need to appoint somebody to, but we certainly can designate somebody. I mean, it's been, I think it's been me, but I haven't initiated anything, nor has John Debari, so okay. well, we I just have been John radio saying, silence. It would be really great if somebody could. Yeah. I don't think that was like an official request. It was right. More so, yeah. Is anybody already going to LUP? Not to my knowledge. What is LUP? The former Platt Annexation. The former Planning PAC. Committee. Yeah. Planning Committee okay. Gotcha. I thought, I thought we had decided to have <coughs> um, to like present to them quarterly or yeah. semi-annually, um, not necessarily attend regularly because it's like a chunk of Wednesday morning. Yeah. Which that doesn't work. For me, anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think I've just been kind of waiting on an invitation, but that maybe we need to be the ones that. Maybe this will spark. Yeah. Well, maybe when you send this along um, and you chat with John to say, you know, we're still up for maybe a quarterly report mm -hmm. from the planning board, so that way we can actually present and track progress towards this resolution as well. Mm -hmm. So it provides some follow up. Totally. Okay. Okay. Uh, new business and referrals. Any new business or referrals? Comments from planning board members. I have. I have one. John. Eva. Um, we're, uh, unfortunately, tonight the our meeting uh, overlapped with the one on open space and the open space planning process. And I've, um, I'm wondering if it's appropriate for us to request that the open space staff present to us about their, uh, you know, th their plan going forward. Um, and I, and I partly I say this in in addition to what I had said earlier because um, you know the protecting the hillside certainly affects where growth and development can occur and it just seems to me we don't really consider that very much in the big picture of the of where you know of growth in and 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 regardless i think it's a really important thing for the planning board to be aware of what is being proposed as far as an open space uh plan an update i guess i don't know if that's is that appropriate john i i think so yeah i think we can pretty much ask anybody to come talk to us that we'd like you know i mean and that makes a ton of sense so. does it okay if others, I just if others are interested, I don't. You know, yeah. Wish it. That's a great idea, Eva. I would welcome that presentation. So I'm assuming that maybe somewhere on the county website, I can I can find some like the folks who maybe were putting on that. Yeah, the person at the city is Elizabeth Erickson. Oh sure, okay. Um, and I actually don't know the name of the person. At the Okay. It would be Kaylee Becker. There you go. Kaylee Becker. Kaylee. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Any other uh, comments from planning board members? Okay. Seeing none, we will adjourn for the evening. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Sign away. Yep. Got one that's not stapled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're cruising here. <laughs> <laughs>